All right, guys, we are going to take some notes today on comparing mitosis, which we know is that process of making two identical cells, to the process of meiosis, which we've learned is where we make four genetically unique cells. So you're going to want to get your notebooks or your paper or your guided note page um, as you go through this so that um, you are ready to take notes. The first part of this is that we know that is it is important for cells um, and living things to be able to make more cells, to divide their cells. And we've learned from mitosis that those steps create a genetically identical copy of the original cell. And that in meiosis, we're making gametes or sex cells that are all genetically different. With that, we know that mitosis is one way that we can make exact copies. Therefore, it can be an example of asexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction is going to have one parent uh, create exactly identical offspring um, and that they are going to have the exact same genes as their parent. For example, in prokaryotes or cells that don't have organelles and a nucleus, things like bacteria, we have binary fission which is really just a special form of mitosis. So what's going to happen here, we see in our step-by-step, -step, um, the first um, part is that the bacteria cell is going to make a copy of its DNA in that nucleoid region. And if we remember back when we learned about cells, we know that that cell has a single circular chromosome. So it's making two copies. In our picture, one is pink and one is purple. Then the second step, that bacteria cell is going to elongate or get bigger. And those chunks of DNA, those chromosomes, are going to move to opposite sides of the cell. Then that cell wall will start to pinch in and completely go across the cell. And then in step five, we have two daughter cells that are genetically exactly the same. It's like we took our bacteria cell and put it in the copy machine. That's our first example of asexual reproduction. In eukaryotes, things that do have nucleus and organelles in their cells, we're going to go through mitosis. And that's the process we said was good for making new skin cells if you get a cut or bone cells if you break a bone. Um, it's also really good for many types of plants in order to do asexual reproduction. To, um, reproduction. Some examples are budding, um, fragmentation, where like a little chunk of that plant will grow into a whole new plant, or something called vegetative propagation, where we have some roots um, that sort of spread out and then a new plant will grow out of those spread out roots. Then of course, the other type of reproduction is sexual reproduction. It's going to make offspring that are similar to the parents, but they have variations in their genes. It's going to be this genetically unique individual. It is going to require the fusion of gametes, which is that fusion of sex cells. We call it fertilization. And those gametes were made during meiosis. We know that our chromosomes are going to independently assort. We know there's going to be crossing over. And then we know they get separated into those four genetically unique cells. So those processes make this offspring, um, this new genetic combination. So again, genetic variation in mitosis only happens if there's a mutation or a change in the DNA, and then that gets passed on. But in meiosis, in prophase one, we had crossing over. 
or a little chunk of the genes switch places. In metaphase one of meiosis, we have independent assortment. And if you remember, that's where the chromosomes line in the middle in their homologous pairs. And it's not that all of mom's genes are on one side, all of dad's are on the other. It can be arranged any way, giving us lots of possibilities. And then fertilization, where we have one egg and one sperm combined, gives us um, this genetically unique individual um, in that zygote. So there's a lot more variation in meiosis. We know that in both meiosis and mitosis, we start with that diploid cell. It has both sets of chromosomes, one from mom, one from dad. And we know that an in interphase for both mitosis and meiosis, chromosomes have duplicated. However, at the end, we have two very different things. Mitosis is two genetically identical diploid cells and their body cells or somatic cells. And meiosis, we have four unique haploid, half the number of chromosomes, gametes or sex cells. So while we start with the same thing, we create two different products. In this example here um, that you'll want to put in your notes, it's showing you how you start with one, two, three, four chromosomes. That's our diploid number of chromosomes right here. Um, then we'll make a copy and in interface so it makes those little X's. Um, and we are here currently in meiosis, or I'm sorry, mitosis, where those chromosomes are then going to line up in the middle. We're going to pull them apart and we're going to have a cell that is exactly the same as our starting cell, right? A long blue chromosome, a short blue chromosome. Long blue chromosome, short blue chromosome. Long orange chromosome, short orange chromosome. Uh, long orange chromosome, short orange chromosome. Exactly the same as what we start with. This, of course, is going to be used for growth, tissue repair, and asexual reproduction. Then in meiosis, we see that now our chromosomes are lining up in homologous pairs, right? We'll pretend that the blue ones are the genes that come from dad. The red ones are the chromosomes that come from mom. They are going to line up at the middle in homologous pairs. Crossing over has happened. And now we look here uh, when we get to meiosis 2, we have four genetically different, unique um, cells. This is going to be haploid, right? Only two chromosomes compared to our starting four. And these are all genetically unique and they are used for sexual reproductive purposes. So we said that the only way you get variation in mitosis is mutation and that you can get a lot of variation through meiosis. So now we're going to look at what happens if these chromosomes don't separate properly um, and we somehow change the structure or the number of chromosomes in each cell. So accidents can happen in meiosis that can change the number of chromosomes in the cell. This failure of chromosomes to separate the right way is called non-disjunction. Then those cells that will become gametes will, um, can still go through fertilization, but then they are going to have the wrong number or an altered number of chromosomes. Some of them would have too many chromosomes and some of those cells would have not enough chromosomes. So non-disjunction is just the failure of the chromosomes to separate properly, and that's going to leave some cells with too many chromosomes and some with not enough. For example, in meiosis one, those homologous pairs line up next to each other. If they don't separate, 
uh, when they're pulled to opposite ends of the cell, that is called non-disjunction. If we look at what happens in normal meiosis II, then those uh, sister chromatids pull apart and we are going to have uh, three of these chromosomes in this uh, gamete. But over here, we have just this one X, this one sister chromatid pair pulling apart. So we're going to end up with just one chromosome in each of those gametes. So instead of having two, which would be the haploid number of one, two, three, four, this gamete has three chromosomes. This has three chromosomes. It's too many. This has one chromosome. This has one chromosome. It's not enough. They are all abnormal. If there is a non-disjunction that happens in uh, meiosis one, all four gametes are abnormal. If we can go through meiosis one and the homologous chromosomes separate, then we go into meiosis two. Now, normally these sister chromatids pull apart in anaphase two, but if they get stuck together, we will see one gamete that has too many chromosomes, one that has not enough, and then two normal gametes that are haploid compared to our starting cell. So again, if non-disjunction happens in meiosis one, all gametes are affected. If non-disjunction happens in meiosis two, only half of those gametes will be affected. We talked before about karyotypes. Karyotypes is just this picture inventory or, or a sort of a snapshot of the individual's chromosomes. So we can take a cell from a person, we can isolate their chromosomes, and then we can see what happened to them if there's not enough or if there's too many. Again, when we're looking at these, we're looking at these chromosomes. Um, one comes from mom, one comes from dad. And then they are lined up in their homologous pairs. Um, and each one of these little tiny arms on here is going to be the sister chromatid. And they're connected at that centromere. We said before chromosomes number one all the way to 22 are autosomes or body chromosomes and that pair number 23 are our sex chromosomes. Um, last week several of you asked what happens if there's too many chromosomes um, and that can cause a genetic disorder. One example is trisomy 21. That is where we're going to have three copies of chromosome number 21. This disorder is also called Down syndrome. Now, most of the time, these non-disjunctions that affect body cell or um, body chromosomes, autosomes, they're not survivable. Down syndrome is one example that is a survivable condition. But if we look at the sex chromosomes, we can have non-disjunction of those sex chromosomes, and that is survivable. So we can have um, X, X, Y. So we have too many X chromosomes. That syndrome is called Klinefelter syndrome. We can have X, Y, Y. That's not a syndrome. Um, there's no... Um, abnormality to that individual, but they do have too many Y chromosomes. They have a trisomy, three chromosomes. We can have XXX or even XXXX. Um, that syndrome doesn't have a name, but it is also going to be too many copies of a chromosome. And then X, and we're missing a second chromosome. So if we look at this chart, this is X and X. We would just be missing the second one. That's called Turner syndrome. And Turner syndrome um, is a monosomy. We're missing, uh, we don't have enough of a chromosome. 
There can also be changes to those chromosome structure after the birth of a person, um, and it um, can cause um, different disorders and even cancer. So one example is chromosome breakage, like one of those little arms breaks off, can lead to rearrangements and that can make uh, genetic disorders if that happens in body cells and it can also lead to cancer. We have these different ways that there can be rearrangements of the chromosomes. The first thing that can happen is a deletion, where we delete or lose some of the chromosome. We can also have a duplication, where we repeat a part of the chromosome. We can have an inversion, that means it flips upside down, so the whole chunk flips the wrong direction. And we can have something called a translocation, where part of a homologous chromosome breaks off and sticks on to a different chromosome. Here's what that looks like in picture form. So this first um, box, it's showing you that the chromosome should have that um, blue, blue, pink, blue, blue, blue orientation um, and information. And then that pink piece gets deleted and now it's blue, 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 blue. So we are missing genetic information this could lead to a genetic disorder or to cancer. Here's this inversion. We see that it's supposed to be blue, pink, green, blue, 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 but now we've got blue, green, pink. It's flipped upside down. It's switched or inverted. Um, and again, that can cause a genetic disorder or lead to cancer. We can have a duplication. It's supposed to go blue, purple, blue, well, we make another copy of it, and now it's blue, purple, purple, blue. That extra set of information can lead to genetic disorders or to cancer. And then we can have translocation, where a little chunk of the chromosome breaks off and then inserts onto a different chromosome. So we have this blue chromosome. Um, it's supposed to be all blue. This red chromosome, it's supposed to be all red. Well, now we've broke off a chunk and we have red, blue, 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 blue. Uh, and we have blue, blue, red, 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 red. So now we've moved that genetic information to a new place. And again, that can cause genetic disorders or cancer. Okay, guys, that is the end of our notes. Do not forget that you should study your notes. You should look at the extra help open stacks documents um, or the videos. You need to complete your worksheet um, and then that your test is on Thursday. I'm hoping I will see you in class tomorrow. Hope that you have a great rest of your day. And um, please email me if you have any questions.